Okay, we're doing lesson 4-4, four, four, all of 4-4, four, four, and it's called factoring. Now, let me show you, <clears throat> before we do factoring, let me show you the opposite of factoring, okay? You don't need to do this, but I'll show you. So, let's say you have 2x times 3x plus 5. And you had a problem like this maybe back in Algebra 1, and they told you to um, simplify or distribute, right? And you did. And you got 2x times 3x is 6x squared, and 2x times 5 is 10x. Okay, factoring is the opposite of that. Factoring is to start with this and get that. So it's the other way. The also, the other thing that factoring is, is the opposite of foiling. So let's say you have two binomials. Those are both binomials. And when you multiply binomials, you remember to foil? Foil. X times X is X squared. Uh, outside gives you negative 7X. Inside is positive 3X. And then my last term is negative 21. And so you get X squared minus 4X minus 21. Well, today we're going to start with this and find out how to get that. It's not as easy as, you know, foiling's easy. Going backwards is not. Okay. All right, so here we go. Let's do it. Now, what I have for you is I have one way to do all the problems. Okay, back maybe in Algebra 1, if you had it in 7th grade, 8th grade, ninth grade, or wherever, you probably learned like star method, cross method, double cross method, wrong classroom. You probably <laughs> had like all these different methods. I teach one method, and I teach a method called star method. Now, if you have a better method, or maybe not better, if you have a method that you prefer, you like it, okay? If you do your own method, I'm fine with that, all right? When I was growing up, there was no such thing as star method. It was called guess and check. And guess and check made me cry a lot <laughs> because you're constantly putting numbers in and guessing and trying to foil to see if it works, and it's, it's hard. And then I talked to a kid in my sixth, fourth period class, and he said that in Korea, they do this in sixth grade, and then they take time tests on them. Yeah, they give you 30 of them. You do that, yeah? They give you 30 of them, and you have to do a whole bunch of them in like under like two minutes or something, and it's timed. <laughs> You're gonna be good at these, yeah. And he's like, yeah, so he, he does them super fast because he's trained to do them fast. Anyways, he's such a nice guy, you should meet him. Okay, so let me tell you what the star method is. Here's, here's how the star method works, and I have a little video I wanna show you too. Right? <laughs> we're getting past, it's true. Well, we're already past, okay. Uh, AX squared plus BX plus C. So you start with a quadratic, that's what we've been studying in standard form. And what we want to do is we want to factor this into its factors, okay? It's like when you were a kid and you had to take 24 and factor it down, like you had, you had a factor tree, remember? Mm -hmm. Now, this is with letters and variables and all this stuff. All right, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to make a star, okay? Uh, some people call it an asterisk, but I don't know how to spell that, so I just say star method. It's really easy, right? Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do is you're going to take... A and C, and you're going to multiply that, and you're going to put it up top. Do you? And then you're going to take this number B in front of X and put it in the bottom. Okay? And then A is going to go here and here. And what you're going to do is you're going to fill in these numbers underneath the A with numbers. And the numbers are going to be... Uh, what multiplies to give you AC and adds to give you B, okay? Like, for example, let me show you an example. Um, like, for, um, let's say I said something like, what number numbers multiply to give you 10, and when you add them up, they make 7? There's only one right answer. Two numbers that multiply to give you 10 and add up to 7 are what? 5 and 2. Okay? 5 and 2. Nothing else. 10 is 1 times 10, but that doesn't add up to 7. That adds up to 11. 
10 is also negative 5 times negative 2, but that doesn't add up to positive 7. Okay, so there's only one answer when we do that. So let me show you. So here we go. Let's go ahead. We're going to do one. Our first one, we're going to do number one. Um, we're going to take, uh, let's do an easy one. x squared plus 7x plus 12. Okay? Some of you guys can factor this super quickly just by looking at it. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this with the star method. Okay? Star method looks like this. You take uh, a times c, so 1 times 12, that goes up top. 7 goes in the bottom. Uh, a is 1 and 1, that goes there. That a, that, that's going to help us get the coefficient of x. So then you ask yourself, what two numbers multiply to give me 12 that add up to 7? 4 and 3. Okay, you might be pretty good at, at your multiplication tables. Um, you can think 1 times 12, 2 times 6, uh, 3 times 4. You just start dividing by numbers, see what works. And you're like, oh, 4 and 3. Okay, so I put a 3 and a 4, and it doesn't matter what order that's in. And so then your answer would be 1x, which you just write x plus 3 times x plus 4. And if you were to FOIL that out, that's the uh, trinomial that you would get. Okay? All right, they're going to get a little harder. I mean, a lot harder. Um, we're going to have numbers in front. We're going to have negatives. We're going to have all kinds of things. So let's do one now. Let me show you one that's a lot like the last one but it has a number in front of x squared. So let's say you have 4x squared plus 7x plus 3. 4x squared plus 7x plus 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our star. And we're up top, we're going to write 4 times 3 is 12. On the bottom is 7. You're like, oh, it's just like the last one. There are, there are going to be the same numbers, but it's not the same. You know, your factors are not going to be the same. You put a 4 here and a 4 there. So not 1s anymore. That goes 4 and 4. So then same numbers, right? What times what's 12 adds up to 7? 3 and 4. Okay. This is already reduced, 4 thirds. Uh, this one over here is not. So we need to write this as 1 over 1 and keep it as a fraction, okay? So 1 over 1 is reduced. So now what we do is we're going to write 4x plus 3 and x plus 1. And that would be factored. Isn't this good? It's like a whole system. It's beautiful. Mr. Baxter didn't like it because he didn't, you know, doesn't really show how it works and sometimes you can get them wrong. I'll show you that in, in a little bit. I want to, I'll, I'll, well, let's just keep going for right now. Okay, let's have one that has a negative in there somewhere. Let's do this one. X squared uh, plus 3X minus 10. And like I said, if you have a shorter way to do it or you like just cross method, that only works when A is 1, by the way. Um, I like to teach one way, and then you just do it that way every time, and you're fine. But if you have a shortcut, you can just go right to factoring it out. You do not need to show that step, okay? All right, so what number is going to go up top, in the top of your star? Negative 10. Mm -hmm. And then what number goes in the bottom? Good, positive 3. And then a 1 goes there, and a 1 goes there. Okay, multiples of 10. I don't even worry about the negative yet. I go 1 times 10. 2 times 5. Can I get 3 from 2 and 5? Yes. Yeah. As long as the 2 is negative and the 5 is positive. So then our answer, when we factor this, it'll become uh, 1x, or just x minus 2, x plus 5. And that would be it. Bobby, did you get that like four minutes ago? All right, number four. <laughs> number four. Yeah, all right. Okay, how about this one? Uh, x squared. Oh, I love this one. This one's so good. Let me see if I can remember it. Um, yes. Minus 5x minus 6. This one trips people. This one trips people up. Okay? I'll show you this one. This one's so good. So, star method. We're going to put 1 times negative 6 up top the negative 5 in the bottom, and a 1 and a 1. 
Now, factors of 6. 1 times 6, 2 times 3. Oh, I can make 5 from 2 and 3, but you can't, right? I mean, you can, but you can't. Um, see how this is a negative 6? And when I multiply two numbers, one has to be negative and the other one has to be positive. So 2 and 3 will not work. It's going to be a negative 6 and a positive 1. But people see the 2 and the 3 and they think 5, okay, that's going to work. So that one's a little trickier than the normal one. So you get x minus 6, x plus 1. That's a good one to try and trick you on. No offense. All right, let's do another one. Another one. Number 5. See? We're like a third of the way there. We have 20 problems to do. Um, let's do, ooh, here's a good one. 3x squared minus 16x minus 12. 3x squared minus 6x minus 12. All right, so this is a big problem. We're going to have bigger numbers than what we've done so far, so let's do it. Here we go. Draw your star method, and let's take a times c up top, so negative 36, negative 16 on the bottom, and 3 and 3. So you got the setup, and now you have to do some thinking. And this is why multiplication tables, like my, my son, he doesn't like to know his multiplication tables. And this is, it gets really important here, doesn't it? Yeah. So 36 is 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9. I mean, it's, there's a lot of them, right? But I already found it. I already found it. I need a negative 16, and look at this 2 and 18 right here, Okay. And it does matter which one's negative and which one's positive. So I could do positive 2 and negative 18. You could have also done negative 18 and positive 2. It doesn't matter what order those are in. All right, 3 halves, that's reduced. How about 3 over negative 18? 1 over negative 6. Leave the negative in the, in the denominator, okay? So our answer would be 3x plus 2, x minus 6. If you wanted to check all your answers, which I don't recommend, you could foil this all out, and that's what you would get. Yeah? Can you put the negative to the x, or is that the minus Nope. You want to put the negative in the middle. Yeah. yeah so that's why we leave the negative in the denominator. Okay, you try one. Let's do one more of these, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Because sometimes something else pops up, and we'll have to see about that. Okay, so let's do, you try this one. 4x squared plus 5x minus 6, okay? You try this one all by yourself. You've got this. All right, I'm going to get started. If you're not done, that's okay. Just keep going. All right, so I'm going to put 4 times negative 6 up top, so negative 24, 5 on the bottom, 4, and 4. All right, factors of 24. I like to kind of list them out. 1 times 24, 2 times 12. 3 times 8. Ooh, there it is. Yep. Okay, I need a positive 8 and a negative 3. This one is completely reduced. 4 over 8 reduces to 1 half. I'm ready to put this into my binomials. So I get x plus 2, 4x minus 3. Who got that? Anybody? Yeah, good. Good, okay. Um, let's go to the second part, part B. Now this part... In my other two classes, I actually mentioned this first, and I wanted to mention the second here because um, they, they were mad. I don't know. They hated the, the first part, so I wanted to, like, not make you hate this lesson. Um, but when you're factoring, you always need to factor out a GCF first, okay? GCF is the gap, greatest common factor. Yeah, you got to factor that out before you start doing star method or anything else. The GCF is very important. This should always be your first step. None of those had a GCF, which I wasn't too worried about that being our first step, but it needs to be your first step when factoring. I'll tell you what a GCF is. It would be something like this. Um, number, what are we on? Seven. Number seven. Suppose I tell you to factor this. 8x squared plus 16x. And you, you love the star method so much you want to do star method. You're not going to do star method on this, okay? You're going to factor out the GCF, okay? You're going to look at the first term and look at the second term and decide what do they have in common. So start with the numbers. 
What is the greatest number that goes into both 8 and 16? 8. Okay, 2 goes into both of them. 4 goes, those are not the greatest, though. The greatest is 8. And then they each have some x's. This one has 2, and that one has 1. Okay, so in my other class, they don't understand this. I said, well, what if I was going to make it fair? And you had two apples and you had one apple. And I wanted to take the same amount from both of you. Can I take two apples from the guy who only has one? No. no. So the greatest common factor there would just be x. OK. And so take that 8x and we're going to factor it out. And when you factor it out, it's the opposite of distributing it in. We're going to be dividing it out. So 8 divided by 8 is 1. x squared, when I've taken x out, I'm left with 1x. Okay, the, the variables work a little differently. Here, 16 divided by 8 is 2, and I take that x and I move it to the front. And that's it. That's all you can do. But that is factoring out the greatest common factor. All right, you try one. Number 8. Uh, 12, a squared b plus 16, a cubed b. Okay, so you can't use star method here. We're not doing that. We're factoring out the greatest common factor. We're taking everything that's in this, that's the same factors of the first term and the second term, dividing them out. All right, you try it. Are we confused a little bit? Maybe? No? Well, let's see. The biggest number that 12 and 16 have a factor of is 4. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the a's, um, the first one has 2 and the second one has 3. So we can take 2 from both. Mm -hmm. And then the b's, they each have a b, so we can actually factor a b out from both too. So when we divide 12 by 4, we get 3. Uh, a squared and b both come out of there. Over here, divide by si four or 16 divided by 4 is 4. We're going to take two a's from the a cubed, so we're left with 1. And we take the b out of there, that's it. Yes? We're good. OK, now let me show you how this plays into the star method. OK? So number 9. Suppose that we want to factor 2x squared plus 24x plus 64, okay? And then you go to star method and you put 128 up top and 24, you're not gonna do that, okay? You're gonna factor out the greatest common factor first. So every single term, there's three of them this time, they all share a what? Two, mm-hmm. They all have a factor of two. In other words, two divides evenly into all three terms. So take that 2 and move it to the front. And someone in my other class said, why can't we just divide everybody by 2 and get rid of it? Well, it's the same reason why you can't take the number 10 and say, no, let's just divide that by 2. I'm going to make that 5. You can't do that, OK? You're not allowed to take 10 and you go, oh, let's just divide it by 2. That makes it 5. No, what you can do is you can write 10 as 2 times 5. You can make it factors, OK? That's what we're doing here. We're going to take the 2 out. We get x squared plus 12x plus, what is that, 32, okay? But then, guess what? You're not done, because when we want to factor, we have to factor all the way. I need to factor now the inside of that. Yeah, so I'm just going to factor the inside, so I want to do star method. And I do 1 times 32 up top. 12 on the bottom with a 1 and a 1. What times what's 32 that adds up to 12? Who's got that? Good. 8 and 4. I heard it a couple of times from a couple of different people. Some of you are still working on it because 32 has a lot of factors. So 8 and 4. And then your answer would then be 2. People forget that guy. It's, he's still there. He's still a factor of this. 2 times x plus 8 times x plus 4. 
that would be your answer. So if you were to FOIL this out, then distribute the two to everybody, you would get what we started with. Okay? All right, let's do one more of those. So it has a greatest common factor in it. You gotta factor it out first. Here we go. People forget to do it. And when you do star method, and this is why Mr. Bexford didn't like this method, and I understand why. If you didn't factor out that two and you did star method, what would happen is your fractions would reduce and your answer would then be x plus eight, x plus four. And we know that's not the right answer. Because when you go to look back at it, there's a two out there, and if I were to get rid of the two there and FOIL that out, there wouldn't have been a two. So the star method actually reduces it all the way and gets rid of your GCF. So that's why you have to factor it out first and then do it from there. Okay, so let's try this one. 4x squared plus 14x minus 18. Okay. So make a point in your mind to always look for a GCF first, all right? Um, four won't go into all of them, but what will? Two. two, perfect, two again. So factor that two out to the front. So two X squared plus seven X minus nine, okay? All right, now we're going to take the inside and do star method with just that inside part. So two times negative nine is negative 18. Seven on the bottom, two and two. All right, I think you're gonna get pretty good at these after a while. So what times what is 18, or negative 18 adds up to seven? Good, a positive nine and a negative two. Right, two ninths does not reduce. 2 over 2 reduces to 1 over negative 1. And now we're ready to write our answer. Don't forget that 2 needs to come along. We get 2x plus 9 and x minus 1. And there it is. Mm, so much work, right? But the payoff is so good. I mean, look what we just accomplished. Nothing. Okay, here we go. Number 11? Are you good with these? You feel like you've had enough of those? Moving on? Okay. Part C. Another one. Yeah, there's two more other ones. Okay. Perfect square trinomials. Perfect square trinomials. All right. These are shortcuts. You'll like these. Uh, maybe like isn't the right word. You'll, uh, you'll be okay with them. You'll tolerate. You'll tolerate. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, perfect square trinomials. Do you know your perfect squares? Yeah. Perfect squares start like this. No. One squared is one. Two squared is four. Three squared is nine. Four squared, 16. 25, 36, 49. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Forever and ever. Those are your perfect squares, okay? So when you see these perfect squares, you're going to recognize that it's called a perfect square trinomial. And there's two types. Here they are. If you have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, okay? What happens is you have perfect square on the outsides. And the middle term is special 2ab. What happens is you can factor this as a plus b times a plus b you get the same factor, and when you have the same factor, you can write that as a plus b squared. Mm -hmm. Okay, my fifth grader, you guys, my fifth grader took 12, and he wrote a little factor tree for that. And he broke it down to four and three, and then he broke the four down to two and two, and when he wrote his answer, he wrote two squared times three, and I was like, wow, that's really good for fifth grade. I didn't know they did that. That's great. Okay, but what I'm saying is if you have the same factor, like two times two, you can write that as two squared. So if you have the same factor, a plus b, a plus b, you can write that as a plus b squared. All right, the other one is gonna be almost the same. The only thing that changes is the middle is now negative, but everything else is the same. You have a perfect square, perfect squares on the outside, and they're both positive, but the middle term's negative. 
What that does is that makes it a minus b times a minus b, which is a minus b squared. Okay? All right, so let's do some. Oh, and by the way, star method works, though. Star method works for these. All right, what number are we on? 12? 13? 12. 12? We've hit a cool dozen. All right, number 12. Um, let's do a hard one. Let's start off. With hard. Okay. 49x squared plus 42x plus 9. Okay. Let's say I'm, I'm going about my business. I'm doing my homework over the weekend. By the way, you guys have been so good. Homework's due Monday, okay? No problem. All right, so you're doing that, and you're like, okay, I'm a star method. I keep doing this 49 times 9. What? No way. She's crazy, right? That would be crazy. Uh-uh. I don't want to do star method. I want to look at this, and I want to recognize that 49x squared is a perfect square, and so is 9, okay? So I can take this. And I can write this as the square root of 49x squared is 7x. Square root of 9 is 3. The middle term is positive, so I'm going to put a plus here, and I'm going to have two of them. Shortcut. You love the shortcut. Now, is anyone questioning? What are you questioning? Where's that 42 coming from, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where did you put the x squared? Mm, so, square root of 49 is 7. Square root of x squared is x. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I'll show you where that 42 is coming from. You agree that 7x plus 3 squared is 7x plus 3 times 7x plus 3, right? If I were to FOIL this out, I get 49x squared. Now, take a look at the oi i part. The oi part, yeah. The oi part is 21x and 21x. What does that make? 42x. That's where it comes from, okay? And then 3 times 3, that's just the 9 on the end. All right, so you try one. And when you recognize the shortcuts, it's so nice because then you don't have to do so much work. 13. You do this one. 4x squared. Whoa, whoa, is everyone? Oh, you're leaving. Yeah. No, you haven't learned difference of two squares yet. You'll have to go to the 27 mark. Can you remember? 27, 27. All right, 4x squared minus 12x. Well, good luck, ladies and gentlemen. What is this for? Cross country. You're going to run in this heat? No. That's dumb. Right? I only run when someone's chasing me, of course. Yeah, or when they're taking my recyclables. Because <laughs> I'm that poor. Okay, here we go. Now, if you don't like the shortcut, you don't understand it, you hate it, whatever, that's fine. You can hate all you want. But you can do star method. It just might take you a little longer because the numbers get pretty big. But look at, recognize that this is a perfect square. That's a perfect square. And so if you put this into the whole thing squared, it's going to be 2x and 3. Now, the middle term's minus this time, so that'll be a minus. And when you want to check, check this way. See this negative 6x in here, if you were going to FOIL, if you're going to multiply them all together? Well, there's two of them, and that makes negative 12x. All right, now we also are going to put a GCF onto this one, too. So what if you have, number 14, what if you have 100x squared minus 40x plus 4? Okay, you might be very tempted to go right away and go, ooh, perfect square here, perfect square here, and you're right, but you always have to start with the GCF. And what do all three of these terms have in common? Four. Perfect. Factor the four out, okay? So you get 25x squared minus 10x plus one. Okay. Now I'm ready to recognize again, oh, look, perfect squares. And one is a perfect square. It is. I know it's weird, but people forget that one. And we can write this as 5x, 1, minus in the middle, minus there. And that would be completely factored. Okay? All right. Last part. Part D. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're going to miss this one, though. You're all right with that. Okay. All right. This is called the difference of two squares. So let's see what all those words mean. Difference of two squares. First of all, difference means minus. Okay. Two means, you know, the number after one before three. That means two of them, right? And squares are perfect squares. So we're going to have two perfect squares, and there's going to be a minus in the middle. And that's the way these work. So let me show you what they mean by this. If you have x squared minus 9, okay? Well, let's look. This is a perfect square. That's a perfect square. It's the difference, and there are two of them. So that's what this means, difference of two perfect squares. Here's how the difference of two perfect squares factors every time. x squared is x times x. Negative 9 is positive 3 times negative 3. Okay, difference of two squares always factors as a plus and a minus. The trinomials are always plus plus or minus minus, but these are plus minus. Now watch, if you were to FOIL this out, what's the middle term here? Nothing. It's zero. Negative 3x, positive 3x. That's why there's no b. There's no middle term. Now, some of you who are like, I love star method. I'm going to write this negative 9, 0, 1, and 1. Guess what? You get the same answer that I do. What times what's negative 9 adds up to 0? Negative 3, positive 3. You get the same answers if you do star method on this. Okay? All right. Let's do, uh, they get a little tough, though. Number 15. Here we go. Yes. There's the light at the end of this awful tunnel that we're in. Okay, uh, 4x squared minus 25. And these are my favorite. They really are. I love the difference of two squares, okay? Because there's not much work to do. You know, I'm a little lazy. There we go. And it's a shortcut, okay? So 4x squared is 2x times 2x. And negative 25 is positive 5 times negative 5. Yeah. Don't write that as a whole thing squared because these are different from one another. They're not the same. They're a lot alike, but they are not the same. Mm -hmm. Guess what I'm going to add in this now? I'm going to put a GCF in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do, um, let me see. 18x squared minus 50. So start with factoring out the GCF. And what number do both 18 and 50 have in common? Perfect, right? Two. So factor that out. And you're left with 9x squared minus 25. And don't stop there, because you can keep going. Because we have perfect square, perfect square, and it's the difference of two of them. So we can write this now as 3x plus 5 and 3x minus 5. Do you guys remember doing these in Algebra 1 at all? Yeah? Did you hate them? Yes. You might not hate them this time. I'm not saying you will. I mean, you might hate them still. But they're going to be easier this time because your brain has already seen it. It's already thought of it, and now you're doing it again. Okay? Um, <laughs> let's do one more. Let's do this one. 25x squared plus 100. Factor that. Factor that as much as you can, but not too much. <laughs> you missed the difference of two squares, but when you got to go, you got to go. I get it. Okay. <laughs> now you can load up on that water again. Yep. I might stop you at 17. You might not need more than that. You've been really good. My other class, they grumbled through the whole thing. Didn't you guys? Sorry, I was yelling at them if they're watching on the video. Yes, they ruined my day. The fourth period were horrible. <laughs> Their mom's all sitting there. What did you do to her? <laughs> like, good, you get him, mom. Okay, <laughs> it's probably a him. Like Daniel or someone. <laughs> shout out. Okay, <laughs> a bad shout out. <laughs> All right, let's factor out the 25, and you get uh, x squared plus 4. 
Guess what? Please don't, please don't tell me you went farther because that's it. That's all you got. Yeah. Let's talk about this. Yes. Okay, yeah, five is not the GCF, yep. Five is a common factor, it's a CF, but it's not the GCF, right? Okay, and then if you kept going, let's say some of you, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna call you out, I'm gonna write it in red because you're wrong. Some of you kept going and you went X and X, and you went four is plus two and plus two. That doesn't work, okay, let's see why. See, that gives us a middle term of four X. There's no middle term of four X there. So maybe that's not what you did. Maybe if you got it wrong, which I'm not saying you did, but maybe you went, okay, x squared plus 4 is x plus 2 and x minus 2. And that works for that, but look at what's the last term? Negative 4, but that's a positive 4, so that doesn't work either. So your answer needs to stop right there. And that's what I meant when I said factor it, but not too much, because a lot of people want to keep going, okay? And you couldn't there because it was not the difference of 2 squares, it was the sum. All right.